A few years back I bought myself a decibel meter for no reason other than for a bit of fun. Someone spotted it in one of my videos and suggested that I could do a video testing out how loud various workshop tools are. At first I thought it would make a really interesting video, but after a bit of filming I realised it was starting to look really boring and decided against doing it. But then by poor chance I did something which recorded a surprise result, which I thought would be worth showing. So I carried on with the video and I uploaded it. So this is only a short video, with a little bit of ear protection information, and a bit of an interesting finding towards the end. So I'll try not to send you to sleep, but basically, noise levels are recorded in decibels, and apparently levels under 70 decibels are generally considered safe, and levels over 85 decibels are considered harmful. But there are many factors involved, including exposure time, distance from source, and acoustics to name just a few. But for the sake of a few simple tests, I'm simply going to measure a few tools and see if the readings that I get are similar to those listed with instructions to each machine. Because if they are, and of course they should be, then at least it gives the user an idea of whether ear protection should be worn or not. Although I guess it's sensible to wear ear protection with all power tools anyway. Now, for every increase of 3 decibels over 85 decibels, the length of time your ears can handle the noise before damage occurs actually halves. So if it's accepted that at 85 decibels you could listen to the noise for 8 hours before damage occurs, 88 decibels would be just 4 hours, at 100 decibels the time is reduced to 15 minutes, and at 120 decibels instant damage could occur. So if you're still awake and you're still with me, this is the meter that I'll be using. It's a Tac Life sound level meter and it's not expensive to buy at all. First thing I did was measure the background noise in the workshop, which is well insulated and comes out at just 30 decibels, and an annoying cough takes it to around 83 decibels. <coughs> as I'm in the workshop, the first thing I thought I'd measure was my music system, which may seem more annoying to some than others as it's one of my own compositions, but this came out at 88 decibels close to the speaker, no wonder my missus always gets annoyed with me playing it. But you'll notice as the meter moves away, the decibels drop, around about 75 decibels, and slightly less when I'm almost 3 metres away. Playing along with the guitar amp I'm fairly low and I'm hitting around the 90 decibel mark, so in theory at these levels I could play for a couple of hours without worrying too much, but it'd probably be more sensible just to turn it down a touch. My lathe is in this workshop, so with no load applied I turned it up to full speed, and it reached around 76 decibels. It's a few years old, and although I checked online, I couldn't actually find the official decibel levels for this lathe to compare it with the readings that I recorded, but I'm guessing they wouldn't be much different. One thing I did manage to find a reading for was my pneumatic vacuum. This vacuum is fairly quiet compared to many others that I've owned previously, and the booklet states a decibel level of around 77 decibels. My meter recorded 79 to 81, but I've got a vacuum hose attached and it's partially blocked, giving me a slightly expected increase in noise levels. Although surprisingly, if you place the meter at the point of suction, the meter hits 93 decibels, which means you'd be looking around to keep an exposure to around an hour max without hearing protection. One of the tools I use most often is my scroll saw, and it's a fairly well built machine and quiet compared to most. I couldn't find the decibel level in the instruction booklet, but I had it running at around 62 decibels with no load, and almost 90 decibels when cutting. Definitely worth sticking your earmuffs on for the scroll saw, as some considerable time is usually spent cutting at this machine. The drill press under low was fairly quiet at 75 decibels, and with small drill bits, cutting through wood didn't seem to make a huge amount of difference to the noise. Now this is my other pneumatic vacuum, and it's not quite as powerful as the other one I used before, and even with the hose connected, it only reads 84 decibels, but when you start sucking things up, it can hit around about 94 decibels. Now the table saw is quite loud, even with no load, hitting around 91 decibels, Cutting plywood took it to around 94 decibels, which doesn't seem like a big jump, but as every 3 decibels halves the time that you can listen to the noise before damage occurs, this does in fact take it from a no load of 2 hours to just 1 hour, but to be honest, I'd be having my earplugs in this machine every time I use it. Now my small trend router was hitting the 85 decibel mark, so definitely the need for ear protection, and using just a little round over cutter took it to 88 decibels. The jet thicknesser was hovering around the 86 decibel mark under no load. Planing took this to around mid 90s, and this is fairly loud. The bandsaw under no load was around 85 decibels. 
and cutting plywood took the levels well over 90 decibels, which was in keeping with the readings within the record power instruction booklet. The CNC is a loud piece of kit and I always wondered just how loud, so it came as no surprise that it hit the 100 decibel mark. One tool I've always struggled with that ear protection is my Bosch Glide. The manual quartz levels of over 100 decibels and that proved to be correct. And going off the recommended time for the exposure, you'd be looking around 10 minutes with that ear protection. But as with most of my power tools anyway, I'd always have my ear protection on. So I know I've only covered a few tools here, but it's clear to see that where the figures are quoted in booklet, they are fairly accurate and certainly it's advisable to wear ear protection on all the machines. But I did say there was one surprise reading, and I bet you're wondering what power tool that was. Well this is it, it's the hand saw. So before I measure how loud it is, hand tools are never something I really considered something to be requiring ear protection with. But on cutting this piece of wood, it did give me food for thought. Almost a reading of 91 decibels. Unless of course it was a little wood louse fought to bomb in the shop, but that was totally unexpected. That's technically as loud as a lawnmower, and it would limit me to two hours continuous work before I needed to consider ear protection. But still, I wasn't expecting it to be so noisy. So whilst this is not one of my more interesting videos, I think it does highlight the importance of the need to wear ear protection with pretty much any power tool in the workshop, and possibly even with certain hand tools if used for long periods. I'm not going to try and teach people to suck eggs, but it is true, it is better to be safe than sorry. Prior to making the videos on YouTube, I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. Unfortunately, an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with, and after years of failed therapy, I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interests and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there is additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support.